If we have a discrete dynamical system, such as x sub t plus 1 equals 1 1.2 times x sub t, with initial condition x not equals 0 0.5, then it is simple to calculate x sub t for future times. To go from time step t to time step t plus 1, we need to multiply by 1.2. We can iterate this process to go from x naught to x1 to x2, etc. x1 is 1.2 times x naught, which is 1.2 times a half, which is equal to 0.6. x sub 2 is 1.2 times x sub 1, or 1.2 times 0 0.6, which is 0 0.72. Continuing in this process, x sub 3 is 1.2 times x sub 2, which equals 1.2 times 0 0.72, which is 0 0.864. We could do this indefinitely. We could calculate x sub 100 with this process, but it would take a while. For a system as simple as x sub t plus 1 equals 1.2 times x sub t, though, there is another way to figure out what x sub t will be for any value of t. We can actually solve the system to give us a direct formula to calculate x sub t directly. By solving the system, we mean find a formula for x sub t in terms of the time step t and the initial condition x naught. Unlike the system we are given, it cannot depend on the value of x from the previous time step. How do we come up with such a solution? We don't have a standard algorithm to solve discrete dynamical systems. In fact, for most such systems, we can't even find a solution formula. But the above system is simple enough that we can find a solution. For this dynamical system, to advance one time step, we must multiply by 1.2. To advance two time steps, we just have to do the same thing twice. Multiply by 1.2 twice, or multiply by 1.2 squared. For example, to go from x0 to x2, we start with x0, multiply by 1.2 to get x1 equals 1.2 to x0, and multiply by 1.2 again to get x2 equals 1.2 times x1 equals 1.2 times 1.2 times x0, which is 1.2 squared times x0. Similarly, x sub 3 is 1.2 times x sub 2, so it is 1.3 cubed times x0. If we want to go from x0 all the way to x sub t, we just have to multiply by 1.2 t times. In other words, we have to multiply by 1.2 to the power of t. For any initial condition x0, the solution to the dynamical system is x sub t equals 1.2 to the power of t times x0. If we plug in our initial condition x0 equals 0 0.5, then the specific solution is x sub t equals 1.2 to the power of t times 0 0.5. We can immediately calculate that x sub 3 is 1.2 to the power of 3 times a half, which equals 1.728 times a half, or 0 0.864. We can jump right to t equals 10 and determine that x sub 10 equals 1.2 to the power of 10 times 0 0.5, or about 6.192 times a half, which is 3.096. We can even go all the way to t equals 100 without any additional effort, since x to the 100 is 1.2 to the power of 100 times 0 0.5. This gives us something like 41 million. The reason we could solve this dynamical system was because it is so simple. It is a linear dynamical system because the right-hand side is a linear function of x sub t. In general, we can write such a linear system as x sub t plus 1 equals a times x sub t, with initial condition x naught equals b, where a and b are just two numbers called parameters. If you substitute a equals 1.2 and b equals 0 0.5, you have the system we began with. Let's leave the parameters as arbitrary values, though we can still solve the linear system. The solution is x sub t equals a to the power of t times b. To go from the initial condition x naught equals b to x sub t, we just have to multiply by a t times, or multiply by a to the power of t. 
we can now easily solve a system like y sub t plus 1 equals 0 0.7 times y sub t, y0 equals 1730. The solution is y sub t equals 0 0.7 to the power of t times 1730. The solution to the system q sub n plus 1 equals 2 times qn, q0 equals 3, is qn equals 2 to the power of n times 3. In all these examples, the dynamical system is given in what we call function iteration form. They were written so that the value at the next time step was a function of the value at the previous time step. x sub n plus 1 equals f of x sub n. In these cases, f was a linear function of the form f of x equals a times x. Often, though, when deriving a discrete dynamical system, we start with a dynamical system in terms of the change in the value of the state variable, such as x sub n plus 1 minus x sub n equals 0 0.3 times x sub n, x naught equals 300, which could represent a population that increases by 30% in each time step. We say such a dynamical system is in difference form because the left-hand side, x sub n plus 1 minus x sub n, is the difference in the state variable across a time step. If we start with a system in difference form, it isn't difficult to change it to function iteration form. We can solve for x sub n plus 1 just by adding x sub n to both sides of the equation. If we add x sub n to both sides of the above system, the right-hand side is 0 0.3 x sub n plus x sub n, which equals 1.3 x sub n. The dynamical system converted to function iteration form is x sub n plus 1 equals 1.3 times x sub n, x naught equals 300. Now we see that in each time step we multiply by 1.3. The solution is x sub n equals 1.3 to the power of n times x naught and we can plug in x naught equals 300. Similarly, if we were modeling a population that started with 500 individuals and decreased by 20% in each year, we could come up with a dynamical system in difference form. p sub t plus 1 minus p sub t equals negative 0 0.2 p sub t, p naught equals 500, where p sub t is the population size in year t. To convert it to function iteration form, add p sub t to both sides. p sub t plus 1 equals 0 0.8 p sub t, p naught equals 500. The solution is p sub t equals 0 0.8 to the power of t times 500.